So when we we talk about things that are alive, and these this applies to all living things, whether it's a plant, a bacteria, archaea, an animal, a human, living things carry out certain steps, certain processes, we call them. And all living things do these. All living things need nutrition and they transport materials. They have respiration, excretion, synthesis, regulation, growth, and reproduction. We'll talk about each one in turn. And we're going to talk about these more as we go talk about different parts of the cell, different parts of an organism, of a human. So we'll kind of be revisiting things. This is giving us just kind of a background so we understand what some of these terms mean. And a lot of these are going to be reviewed. So these are processes that living things carry out. Um, and all of these functions are required for the what we call homeostasis. This is a really important word. And I know you've heard it before, homeostasis. So, like, what does it mean? You learned it in seventh grade. Do you know what homeostasis means? It's kind of a big word. It really, you could think of it, Kaya, go ahead. Um, I mean, plant, all living things, it's, it's related to all living things, really. Homeostasis is keeping stable internal condition, keeping a balance. So it's a term that you really need to know because like you'll be asked sometimes on the Regents exam about homeostasis or how different organs in your body help maintain homeostasis. Metabolism is another term. Metabolism is all of the different chemical reactions that take place within a living organism. And so it's super complex. This is a small diagram that shows many of the chemical reactions taking place within a living organism. Oops, sorry. I need it. And so these life functions we're talking about, they're important for maintaining homeostasis and for metabolism. So let's talk about nutrition. We already used these terms. All living things need some kind of material to get energy. Right? And that energy can come from different places. We already talked about autotrophs. Remind me of what they are. Or what they do. Make their own food. They have to use light. Is there an autotroph you can see in this room? Right there. This plant, we'll talk more about photosynthesis. When light hits these leaves, it's gonna be making glucose. You can't do that. You have to eat, you have to drink a Mountain Dew watermelon or whatever that was. Nasty. Yes. And you're going to get a ton of glucose through drinking that. You need to consume things to get energy, to get glucose. These plants don't. They just make it on their own using carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the soil and sunlight. Plants can do it. Some algae can do it. Some bacteria can do it. Some protists. You are heterotrophs. You have to get your food. Oh, there's all our, pro, our autotrophs. You have to eat things. You have to ingest food, which means take it in. Then you have to digest the food, which means break it up into small pieces. And then anything that's not used has to be egested, removed from the body. So heterotrophs include humans, all animals, also the bacteria, fungi, yeah, some protists. They're all heterotrophs. They have to find stuff to eat. That's how they're going to get energy. Hmm. 
man wants materials are obtained, they have to be transported. You drank your Mountain Dew watermelon and it's in your stomach. Well, somehow the sugar and the nutrients, whatever nutrients might happen to be in there, need to get to the rest of the parts of your body, right? They need to get to your brain so you could think about your science notes. They need to get to the muscles in your legs so you could walk home after school. That's transport, moving those materials around from one place inside the organism to another, that's what transport is. I thought the uh, sugar was immediately taken to the liver where was that stored as fat. Where it's what? Stored as fat. I mean, not immediately, some of it's used up, but excess sugar can be stored in the liver. So the first part of that is absorbing the nutrients. So when you, when you eat, a pop tart for breakfast goes into your stomach. It's still not really in your cells. After it's digested, then it's absorbed through the cells of your intestine into your blood. And then it can be transported around. And then it's what we call distributed, moved from place to place within your body. Now, if you were just a single celled amoeba, this would be simple. Right? The materials you took in would just go through your cytoplasm. But you're not. You're multicellular. You need special systems to move things around. What do we call that system? Your circulatory system. Pumps your blood and your blood is carrying all these materials with it. Even plants. Plants don't have blood, but they do have little tubes in here in the stem going out to the leaves that carry water and carry sugars around in the plant. It's like a circulatory system, but for the plant. Sometimes we actually tap into it to make what? In a tree. I never know what product is made by... What are there? Maple syrup. Right, sap, if you tap a tree, you sort of hammer a little metal piece into it as the sap's flowing, which has lots of sugar in it, you collect it in a bucket, you boil it away and you make maple, maple syrup. Respiration. Respiration is really important. It's what actually takes the sugar that Cade gets drinking his watermelon Mountain Dew and actually get something useful out of it. Respiration takes sugars and out of it gets a molecule that's called ATP. This is one you have to know, ATP. It's like energy that the cell uses to do stuff. It's important because your cells can't really run on glucose directly it needs to be transformed into this molecule called ATP. Just like, um, does a gallon of gasoline have energy in it? When you put it in your car, you get, it allows your car to go. It does have energy. But can you pour gasoline into your cell phone to charge it? No. No, of course not. But, you could pour the gasoline into a generator, which transforms the energy from the gasoline into electricity, and then you can plug your cell phone into that. So energy can be transformed from one form to another. And that's what's happening in cells and respiration. They take glucose, which has energy, and transform it into a usable form that we call ATP. Sometimes... That can happen with oxygen most of the time, like in humans and other animals. But sometimes if we don't have enough oxygen, it can happen without oxygen. And those are two different types of respiration. Excretion, what does that word mean? And remember from 
and screed. Get rid of waste. Yep. It's removing the waste products that are produced when our body's using energy and doing its job. So what kind of waste products? Well, water is one of them. We get rid of water by sweating. Okay. In our urine, we get rid of excess water. That's why if you drink a ton of water, your urine is clear because your body's getting rid of the excess. Urea is a compound that we get rid of by our kidneys producing urine. It's made of nitrogen. Carbon dioxide, we talked about when we were talking about using our muscle, it builds up waste products like carbon dioxide build up and we have to get rid of them by exhaling. Many parts of our living things are made of large complex molecules. And to build those molecules, we have the process of synthesis. Synthesis takes small, simple molecules and puts them together to make larger molecules. Why do we need to make new molecules? Well, sometimes to grow taller. You guys are probably still growing, which means in your bones, in your muscles, your cells are making new bone tissue so your bones can elongate. So your muscles can get bigger. To make those things happen, you need more material. You need more proteins and, and other material. For cells to grow in size, or to, if you get a cut on your skin, to fill in that cut, you need new cells. You need to synthesize, create new molecules from smaller, simpler molecules. Another very important life function is regulation, which helps to coordinate, helps to control our life activities, helps to maintain homeostasis. So let's talk about two examples of regulation in our body. Body temperature is one of the easiest to understand. Humans are warm blooded. We maintain a constant body temperature that's around 37 degrees Celsius. And our body has ways of correcting if our temperature goes above or below that. What happens if our body temperature starts to rise above normal? What's our body's method of regulating it? Sweating. Right? If you go outside, the sun's shining, you ran, your body temperature's starting to rise, you'll start sweating. Sweat, as it evaporates from your skin, cools down your body. So that's your body maintaining homeostasis, maintaining the proper body temperature. What happens if your body, you go outside, you forgot your jacket, it's cold out, and your body temperature starts to go below normal? How does your body react? Your heart beat faster, you might start shivering, that your muscles are contracting, it's warming your body back up. You even have like behavioral things like imagine in the middle of the summer, you don't have any air conditioning in your bedroom that's up on the third floor of your house and it's super hot. You probably don't think about it, but what body position do you take when you're sleeping? Like if you imagine sleeping under those conditions, what would you be like? You just be like spread out completely, right? Because what you're really doing, even though you're not thinking about it, you're like maximizing the area where heat can escape from your body. How about this morning? 
that your family refuses to turn on the heat. It's too early. We're not turning it on until November. And your house is freezing. And all you have on your bed is a thin little blanket. How would you sleep in those conditions? You're like, all cut, right? You're like freezing cold. You're keeping all of your body heat in so that you don't lose much. That's an example of like behavioral things that you don't think about, but really that's your body trying to keep the right temperature. So it's more of just on its own. It just happens, right? It's just you don't think about it, but that's why you, you do this. Yes. Let's talk about this example on the left. I'm not look. This is about blood sugar. Does anybody know anything about blood sugar? Anyone know people that have diabetes? Yep. Okay, so when a person, depending on the type of diabetes, this is um, a an issue with um, how our body regulates our blood sugar. So let's say Cade drank his giant watermelon Mountain Dew. Tons of sugar is rushing into his blood. Okay, too much sugar in your blood can be bad. It can damage nerves. Um, but luckily, most individuals can regulate our blood sugar. You know what your body does in that situation? What tells your liver to do that? You're right. Sort of. It, there's a name for it, though. Kai, do you know what... what Hormone is released when your blood sugar rises. It's called insulin. Have you heard of insulin? So if you have, once you eat a meal or drink a sugary drink, your blood sugar rises. Your, your pancreas releases insulin. That's a signal. It tells your cells, hey, too much sugar in your blood. You need to get rid of it. And so it sends that signal using this hormone insulin and your liver takes it in and your blood sugar drops down. There's a different hormone that does the opposite. Let's say you don't eat for a long time and your blood sugar is dropping and you're getting lightheaded. Your body will recognize that and produces another hormone that says, hey, our blood sugar is too low. We need some. And it sends a message to your liver, which releases sugar into your blood. And that process of balancing our blood sugar by our body, that's homeostasis. That's regulation of our um, internal conditions to keep us healthy. Do you have that dog? Can, oh, can you have it? No, sorry. Um, growth. Living things grow. They can grow in the number of cells they have or even in the size of the cells. Okay. Um, and that happens by taking in materials that we've eaten, rearranging the atoms to make new molecules to grow, to grow larger. And then finally, our last life function is reproduction. It's so funny, Kate. Why does it look like it's screaming? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, reproduction is the is making new individuals of the species. So, in some organisms, it's just a cell splitting in two, like bacteria or protists. They just simply split in two. And other animals, such as turtles, tortoises, sexual reproduction takes place in which you have genetic material from each parent combining to form an embryo, which will grow into the new offspring. So reproduction is necessary to keep the species going. All right, so those are the basic life functions.